A whipped beard butter generally has lighter ingredients, a higher oil to butter ratio, and more importantly, during the cooling phase, physically is whipped as it goes from the hot liquid state to the cooler semi-solid state. That is a whipped beard butter. It's light, it's fluffy. Some of the benefits of it for a beard is that it's gonna go through the beard really easily. It's gonna melt down almost instantly. It's gonna leave your beard feeling nourished, but light and fresh. There's usually no wax in there. You usually do not have to wash it out the next morning. It is a good butter to use when you know you're gonna have a rinse day. It's a good butter when you don't need any hold or styling. You just want a little bit of a boost of nourishment. You want a boost of scent. You just want it to feel a little bit more lively. Whipped butters can be absolutely amazing in the rotation for any beard. But as you saw in the title of this video, whipped beard butters are dying. I predict that within the next year or two, we're not going to see any of them readily available. Maybe on an extremely small micro niche batch, but nothing that's able to scale or anything that's really even going to be profitable unless something major change, and I will explain why this is gonna happen, but first I wanna introduce myself. My name is Dan C. Bearded. This channel's all about beards. If you like beards, please hit a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. If you're returned and you've already been subscribed, shout out to you guys. You are the real ones out there. This could not be possible without your support. Okay, so why is it dying? It's super simple. Companies are losing money on beard butter because of customer complaints and customer returns has absolutely nothing to do with the product itself, has everything to do with the shipping process. What happens generally is the company makes it, they've cooled it, it's an amazing state, they hand it over to the post office or any shipping carrier, and it's going from, let's say, Texas, right? I believe Texas has the most beard companies in the United States. It's leaving a hot state like Texas at really any part of the year, right? It's gonna be hot as it gets into those metal trucks, as it gets and sits in a factory or warehouse, whatever you wanna call it. Sorry, I don't know the proper lingua. I know we got some <laughs> mail carriers out there. When it's sitting at the, the mail place, right? The business where they conduct mail, it's melting. That's gonna happen with most beard butters. What happens then when it gets to the consumer, they open it, ah, it's a liquid mess. Now that's not unique to these whipped beard butters, right? There are some beard butters that will melt, but whipped beard butters are highly more likely to. Okay, that's not the biggest problem though, right? If you have a full body poured butter where you don't have that whipped process, all you need to do is let it settle. Usually it's gonna be fine. If it feels gritty, if there's some like, you know, kind of like beads that are in there, all you need to do is melt it, put it back in the container, throw it in the freezer or fridge, boom, you're good to go. Here's our problem. You will never get a whipped beard butter back to that original state it left the company once it's reached that consumer and it's melted. The reason why is we usually don't have the method to be able to cool it, especially at a two or four ounce container. What these companies do to, to whip the butter when it's melting is usually they have like a big KitchenAid mixer, maybe they have a massive vat that has a mechanical arm in there, or they're physically doing it by hand but they're doing it in bigger batches than two or four ounces in which you're buying those butters. So for you to try and whip that with like a spoon or a knife or something as it cools, it's just never gonna get back to that state. And of course the consumer paid for a whipped beard butter. They paid for that consistency. If they're not getting that, they're not happy. They know it's likely not the company's fault. It has to do with the shipping process, but still, they paid for it. They want to get that whipped beard butter. Then they complain, then they get their refund. Now the company's out, not only the shipping costs, they're out the products that they can't use again. It's a really bad situation. And some of my favorite whipped beard butters are being cut from companies and I don't blame them. I absolutely don't blame them. I know companies that have tried using tinfoil. I know companies that have tried using um, ice packs. They've even tried dry ice. Every single one of those options has problems from ranging to it just doesn't look professional, has a bad kind of feel and presentation to the consumer, or the ice pack melts and everything in there gets wet and it can ruin labels, it can ruin every the papers that are in there. There's so many messy problems that come with these whipped beard butters and it breaks my heart because whipped beard butters are amazing, but I don't know a solution that's out there. I want you to think about that. I'm gonna take two seconds, come back to you guys for a conclusion and hopefully get your thoughts on this. We've had other problems with different types of beard butters in the past, like full bodied poured butters that would melt, then they'd get that grit to it or those beads to it and the consumers are like, I know I can melt it, but I don't wanna do that. 
Companies adjusted like Live Bearded, they changed their formula, they changed their packaging, and they've had no problems with melting whatsoever. Now, some don't like the new butter as much, some like it more, right? Every kind of solution has its own pros and cons to it. But my question to you guys is, is two part actually. Number one, what is your experience with whipped beard butter? Do you enjoy it? Was it not for you? Did it have a spot in your rotation? Drop that down below for companies watching. They can check those comments out. And then second, does anybody have any ideas? Like I said, it's not dry ice. It's not ice packs. It's not tin foil. It's not special kinds of packaging to keep the sun out. When it's sitting in that Texas heat, when it's sitting in a truck that's all metal, got an engine running, it's going to melt, especially when it's those lighter ingredients, that lighter ratio of oil to butter, that whipped process. Is there anything? Or is this just one we got to chalk up to, hey, maybe it's not going to be in the carts. Maybe we'll never see a good whipped beard butter at a store. Maybe we'll never see it as a company scales and grows. When you see fantastic companies like Honest Amish, it's all full. It's all poured. It's like, man, I've racked my brain. I cannot think of anything, but I'm posing this out to you guys. And I also wanted to kind of explain why we see this trend because I've heard people complain about it, but I want to drop this explanation so everybody can be like, okay. That makes sense. I understand from the company's perspective why they're losing money, why they should shift gears, but there's so many brilliant people that are out there. I've said it a ton of times, but it's true. When I make these videos, I am never the smartest person in the room. So I would like to learn from you guys on this one, especially if you have, I don't know, expertise in shipping and dealing with products that are heat sensitive. Let us know. I think we can come up with something here. Will it change the game? Who knows? But I know it does not hurt to try, especially for someone like me that loves whipped butters. And I'm really sad to see this trend, but I can understand it. I can explain it. Now let's see if we can solve it. Thank you guys for watching today. Dan C. Bearded, stay bearded and stay positive.